Hi everybody, Russ from My Hammers Eleven. Hope you're safe and well. If you're channel, please consider subscribing, hitting the bell icon so you may have any something to put your content on. As always, I'd like to thank our channel sponsors, Untuck It. Check them out in the description below. And today it's the next episode of Hammers in Hot Water. So we all remember that the Gaza bleach blonde hair of 96 and Ben Foden's attempt to uh, create it for the Euros this year. But long before that, we had our own. Well, actually, no, just after that, 96, 98. But we just had our own uh, Quaffered international star. A man whose end of his West Ham career seemed like the things you'd see on a Netflix documentary. Step forward, Mr. Javier Margas. So let's take you back to just before he signed. It was France 98, and Margas was representing the Chilean national team at the tournament. This was the pinnacle of his international career, where he amassed 63 caps and scored six goals in the 10-year international career for Chile. He was the national team captain um, and a commanding centre-half. And the, the manager at West Ham manager at the time, Harry Redknapp, um, was at the World Cup scouting Javier. Um, he'd also seen him in a friendly um, where he played against England at Wembley, where H said he was the best player on the pitch. Margas was extremely popular in Chile, partly due to uh, his penchant of dyeing his hair in the colour of the team he was playing for, including when he turned up for the national team as well. By the way, the national team had made it to the knockout stages of France 98, which was a great achievement for them. Javier had spent most of it, actually his entire career in South America playing for Colo Colo, Club America and Universidad Catalotica, uh, Universidad Catolica, Catolica. Um, so it was a big move for him signing to West Ham for a million pounds in the summer of 98, not just for him, but for his family. Um, and indeed, he signed the same day as Neil Ruddock. And go back and listen to Neil Ruddock's uh, My Hammers 11 where he talks about that, meeting Javier for the first time and Javier not realising that he was one of the players rather than a um, <laughs> a press guy or something like that, I think he said. So having come back off a strong World Cup, um, there was lots of excitement about Javier joining us, basically. He was an international star. He was also the first Chilean player to play for West Ham. So lots of intrigue surrounded him, particularly as this you know, penchant for, for dyeing his hair and stuff like that. He had an air of sort of intrigue around him. Um, he moved to England with his wife and very young family. None of them spoke any English at all. And so his kids were given special attention at school to integrate into English school life. Um, a friend of mine's mum, that was their job. That was her job. Um, so that's why I know it happened. Um, however, arguably the welfare of players back then, you know, some 20 odd years ago, wasn't as comprehensive as it is now, um, particularly for foreign players coming over to the country for the first time. Um, and that didn't really help Margas adjust to English life, basically. A clear example was the, the first day at training um, when basically Javier got lost on his way um, to the training ground. H recalled of this instance that we gave him a car and a house um, someone showed him the way to the training ground. Next day, he set off for training, and instead of coming to Chadwell Heath, he ended up at Stansted Airport, which is about 40 miles the wrong way. He then got a puncture in a country lane on the way back. I mean, what a nightmare. And indeed, literally, he turned left instead of right. He lived at Loughton at the time, so he'd gone to the M11, uh, and he turned left instead of right. And uh, it just shows you things like that. Nowadays, it's a lot it's a lot better in terms of the welfare of players and how they looked after, particularly, as I said, foreign players coming over. Um, he struggled. He struggled to settle during his first season um, and made only three appearances in total, two defeats and a draw. Um, during the close season, it became apparent that he was really struggling with, with homesickness um, and his wife and kids actually just couldn't settle and move back to Chile, leaving him in England on his own. He soldiered on uh, and would actually have his best season at the Hammers, helping the, the team lift the Intertoto Cup and uh, progressing into the earlier rounds of the UEFA Cup. He was playing well, but he was struggling with, uh, with his private life, missing his family and uh, continually suffering from homesickness. Um, 
at the beginning of the 20, uh, 2000, 2001 season, it became apparent this was becoming too much for Margas, and he just wanted to go home to be with his family. Although the nature of him leaving was very unusual. Uh, as Red Nat recalls, someone said his wife had gone home and he was staying at a hotel, which was the, the Marriott in um, in Waltham Abbey. Um, so he went around there to see him and someone said they had a feeling he might be going home. And he said, All right, he can't. Let, he's got a contract here. We've just bought him. So the, the hotel staff said to him he was in said he, he was in the room and, and, and because we couldn't uh, get to his, he couldn't um, get the key to his. So I asked him to ring, no answer. We were knocking on the door. He went, we went back to reception, came back with a key. He went into the room and he'd left the room. He'd left his gear halfway. There was no gear. The window was open. He'd basically jumped out the window of the Marriott out of a first floor window and had escaped, <laughs> had escaped um, West Ham and, and gone back to Chile. And that was it. That was the end of his, not only his West Ham career, but his professional playing career. He was still in the public eye in Chile, um, most notably appearing in the Chilean version of the island. It was called uh, Expedition Robin Robins. <laughs> I can't put that. Expedition Robinson de la Al VRP. Um, and where it was sort of a, there was 12. Um, Chilean celebrity. I think he came fourth, or he was a fourth one evicted. Maybe he was homesick again. I don't know. But um, he, he also had many other many other ventures. He was well known in Chile uh, for spending habits. Um, think sort of a, a, a Chilean version of Mario Balotelli in terms of the types of things he bought. For example, he bought two Boeing seven three sevens, converted them into motels, single person motels, each with a jacuzzi um and, and one valentine's day he had the idea to add erotic chairs into every room to help his guests um make their make their maneuvers more varied let's say that um <laughs> he was all, he's also a regular attendee at auctions um he famously bought an armored vehicle which belongs to general pinochet um he bought suitcases of cartier and rolex watches um, for 34 million pesos, uh, he purchased 20,000 pairs of jeans from a failing manufacturer. So he's still well known in the um, in the Chilean press for these exploits. And arguably, without homesickness, he may have eventually been mentioned in the sort of the same breath as people like Thomas Repko and Sebastian Schemmel. He was a good player. He played well. When he was, as I said, his his most successful time was uh, was our our most successful season. But he couldn't get; it was too much for him to adjust. In today's society, it may have been different. He may have been able to adjust and integrate and integrate himself more quickly into the English uh, lifestyle for him and his family. But he just didn't, and unfortunately, because of that, he's another hammers in hot water. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And for me, take care, everyone. Stay safe. Wash those hands. Get those jab appointments. Come in your eyes, and I'll see you very soon. Take care.